An automated market maker such as Uniswap has two types of users. First is the trader who will swap between assets provided in a pool and they have to pay a small fee for swapping. Second is the liquidity provider. The liquidity provider is the one that provides the pairs of assets that the trader trades between. They will earn a yield on the traders by providing their liquidity. So for example, on Uniswap here is the US dollar Ethereum pair. And you can see the total value locked, which is the liquidity provided by yield farmers. Here is the fees that they earn. And that's a function of the volume, the volume of the assets traded. Today, I'm going to be back testing Uniswap yield as a liquidity provider. And we're going to talk about two different risks, primarily impermanent loss, but also uh, smart contract bugs. Here's a graphic of impermanent loss. If you don't know what that is, I just read this article here. Impermanent loss occurs when the trading pair of the assets in the pool diverge in price. So now by inspecting element on this page, I can get the raw data for this graph of total value locked. Um, this is going to be easier for me than learning how to do the graph QL query like a civilized person would. Here's the raw data copied. This data is stored in cubic Bezier curve. So I parsed it by running it through some scalars and transforms. And now here I have the total value lock. And it's the same graph that Uniswap has. Next, we have to do it for fees. So this is what the HTML looks like for the fees chart, which is going to be a little more annoying to parse through than the total value locked. So I parsed through the fees and I got the fee graph as well. Now we get the yield by essentially dividing the fees by the total value locked. And the yield graph looks like this. And as you can see in the beginning, in the beginning, yield was extremely high when uncertainty was higher and volatility was also higher in the market. Uh, this number, we have the APY, the um, appreciation scaled over one year, which is about 75%. If we take the last, if we take the last like 90 days, it's closer to about 30% APY. Here I'm calculating the last 100 days average yield, which gives us approximately 0 0.007 yield per day or compounding over a year, about 1.3, or 30% APY. 30% APY obviously is incredibly good, but that's not the whole story. So now we have to um, calculate based on impermanent loss and see what the numbers really tell us. So here's the impermanent loss graph as a function of current price as a percentage of initial price. So for example, imagine that you have an ETHUSD pair and over time, there's a 5x appreciation, meaning it goes from $100 to $500. So if we look at this graph, there would be a 5x divergence in price, meaning a 25% loss in the liquidity provider's value against just holding the two base assets in the pair. However, because a liquidity provider earns yield, if the yield beats the 25% loss, then it will be more profitable to be a liquidity provider. I'm going to use this equation here to get the impermanent loss factor. So here's my impermanent loss function. And to give an example, uh, you input the current price over the starting price and you get back the loss as a percentage of what you would have had if you hold, held. So if the price doubles, you lose about 5.8% of your holding value. So your yield would need to make up for that, and you would need to yield at least around 5.8%. In this graph, I've approximated the total value that a liquidity provider would have versus a holder. So a holder is someone who splits half their portfolio value into US dollars and Ethereum and lets it run for this 348 day period. A liquidity provider does the same thing in the beginning, but then provides those that trading pair into the ETH USDC pool. As you can see, pretty much throughout this entire span, the liquidity provider was more profitable than the holder. So the liquidity provider had about a 63.8% APY, whereas the holder had around a negative 5% APY. One thing to notice during this time period is that the price of ETH ended around the same price that it started at. Being a liquidity provider during a relatively flat period of time is always beneficial. Here I think is a better approximation of being a liquidity provider over a five-year time span. To calculate the liquidity provider value, it's actually somewhat 
complicated because you want to compound your growth. You reinvest every day's yield into the pool. You need to record the cost basis of each day's yield in order to get the total value after impermanent loss. I'll upload this code so if you're curious you can look at how I did that. As we can see here in the beginning, being a liquidity provider was actually less profitable than just holding. I'll zoom into this here. So here's the first 150 days starting from five years ago. And the orange line is the holder. So throughout most of this time, it looks like being a holder was actually more profitable. As the price levels out closer to the starting price, being a liquidity provider is always beneficial. All right, so back to over the five year time period, the APY of being a liquidity provider would be about 1.68 or 68% yield per year in US dollar terms. This value here is actually more important. This tells us the yield on top of our initial holding value. On our ETH USDC pair, we yield an extra 16% on top of the appreciation of that pair. And that's a yearly yield. So question, how could I backtest over the past five years if um, automated market makers haven't been around for that long? So this is just an estimation. I took the last 100 days of Uniswap yield in the ETH USDC pair, and it averaged about a 30% APY on fees. And I use this average daily yield in my calculations here. Let's talk about the second risk on top of impermanent loss. According to the front page of Google, DeFi hacks in 2020 was about 0.5% uh, of total value locked. So that means if we were to use the higher value of 2.78, um, just in a simple expected value calculation, subtract that number from here, and we would get a yield on top of our crypto of about 14% instead of 16. As a final analysis, I'll just say that um, these numbers are back-tested, meaning that they don't predict the future. And secondly, I would assume as the market matures, the yield on a lot of the trading pairs will continue to drop. And finally, if the price of the trading pair that you're providing liquidity for diverge in an extreme manner very quickly, then you should expect the impermanent losses to outweigh the yield that you're getting from fees.